All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Elias. I'm an amateur landscape photographer. I am based out of the Pacific Northwest, and I am currently building out a 2003 Mercedes Sprinter van, and I'm building it out completely for it to be my new photography mission overnighter place to sleep, pretty much. I'm just a regular guy. I don't know how to do any of this kind of stuff, but I've been learning along the way. I'm sharing my journey through YouTube, sharing my experience and things that I do, and why I'm doing the things I'm doing. Just trying to spread the wealth for the community online who is also like myself, who's trying to find ways to build their van out. So if that content interests you, the van build series, please hit the subscribe button. I do put a video out every single week. And if it's not on this, my normal channel is about landscape photography and me traveling to those places and doing my thing. So if that interests you, also hit the subscribe button if you can. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers. Please help me make it happen. Today, we are doing the siding on the van. I think the last episode was about the ceiling and now we are going to be installing shiplap walls in the van. This is something I'm kind of nervous about because there's gonna be a lot of cutting, fitting, a lot of things, a lot of jigsawing. As you know, or old, you will find out, a van is not square. It is rounded and everything but straight. So very interested to see how this is gonna go. For the shiplap, we are using pre-painted half inch shiplap by eight inches long. I bought the pre-painted because honestly, I hate painting more than anything. So if anything to help me along, not having to do as many coats is perfect. I am gonna be painting in white when I'm completely finished. The square footage, I bought way more than I needed and it's expensive, trust me, really expensive. But I bought more than I needed so I don't have to go back and get it because it's a pain in the ass to get stuff to the store. Not only am I going to be doing the siding, I'm also going to be doing the cutouts for the bed on each side. I'm going to side those with shiplap and I'll show you how I do it. I kind of watched a few videos on how other people do it, kind of doing a combined mixture of it. So yeah. First things first is to put the backsplash wall up. Didn't really think this through, if I'm being completely honest, when I was installing the framing of everything. The shiplap is half inch wide, so I need to put a substrate for where it, my backsplash is going to be behind the counter. The backsplash tiles is about 3 16 thick, so I want it to come out to about flush with the shiplap, so I got 3 8 sanded plywood. But yeah, let's go ahead and install this, which I'm kind of nervous about because I'm by myself, so let's see how this goes. How I'm going to get this square is measuring both ends off of the floor, because that's the only thing I can hold true and trust right as of this at this point because of the band there's nothing I could square it off to these are not square so I'm gonna get two screws ready so I went ahead and said screw it and added this little piece in because you know it's just a little bit extra work and yeah it's not completely lined up but i think it'll be fine i need to sand these down when it comes to actually time to install the tile on this thing which i've never done before in my life so that'll be another learning experience this whole thing has just been new learning experiences but now i have this up i'm going to start in the very back probably start on the easier side just so i can get used to it before we get to the more difficult side with a lot more punctures that are going to be through it so yeah, let's start on the passenger side. Okay, so now we're gonna start on the passenger side because there's a lot less things to cut out for than this side. I figure I'd do the easier side first, get used to it. That's my thought process anyways. So we're gonna do the flooring after the walls, right? So the flooring, I want it to transition seamlessly under the shiplap. The flooring I'm gonna be using is a laminate, eighth inch laminate peel and stick. So it's gonna just stick right to this. So I got my two first pieces cut here. And I'm gonna do is use this 3 8 plywood as spacers put it on there so that's gonna give me roughly gonna roughly give me a quarter inch gap from where the laminate's gonna go under so what I want to do tack these in place remove these spacers take the bottom one out to make sure I can put it back in and so when I do the flooring I'll be able to just slide the bottom piece back in also pre-drilling all the holes because this unlike the ceiling I'm going to fill with putty and sand and make it just a smooth wall and not have any screws showing <laughs> I screwed up my second cut because um, this piece actually has to travel throughout the van. So there's that. But I'll need a ton of small pieces, so not a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side of this, so the baseboard's on the other side. And then I'm gonna cut this piece, which will be one solid piece throughout. Another thing that I've learned 
with shiplap. Um, you want to either go all the way, and if you can't go all the way, have one go farther and then have another one stop here. Like don't meet at the same end point like I did the ceiling. And I actually found out I'm supposed to do the ceiling the same way. Don't have your lines all up on the same seam because it's less forgiving that way. Have your seams cut out on different studs. It's a lot more forgiving and it will line up a lot better than just doing that. I don't know if I explained that very well, but I learned you're supposed to do that. And my goal is to have no seams and just have a solid piece throughout. Can I measure the baseboard on the other side and then we'll cut this big long one. It'll be super flimsy. That was a lot of work. Um, this board was too long to put on that side, so I had to completely switch everything around the miter saw over here. But I got my measurement. I measured off the wall this way. Get my cut up against the wheel well, give it in about a 16 inch of play. So, yeah, we're gonna mark this up and we're gonna cut it up. Hope we got it fits. <laughs> that's making it so tight. So I might actually go in there and with the multi-tool and kind of cut those out a little bit. I just, what I don't want to happen is it being so tight and when it, when it expands and contracts, it's going to cause problems. So another thing I forgot to do is I want to put wood glue on each one of these studs before I put these in. So I'm going to go back, take this off real quick, put some wood glue on there just because I feel like it's like the ceiling, like it just helps with it holding it steady and not squeaking, making that noise when like in your house when you walk on the floors and you hear that noise like I just feel like glue is gonna help that so I'm gonna put glue on there and then I'm gonna take the baseboard out because those will go in after I put the floors in so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those two out I'll leave them in place though so I know where they go let's keep on cutting so I have this piece cut right here and now I need to figure out where to cut this. So again, this is not square. Just remember that whatever you put here is gonna get a faceplate over it so you can hide any imperfections. Depending on how big of a faceplate you get, you probably hide ones that are this bad, but we don't want that. So it's gonna go a little bit bigger than this is, than this allows. Put this here and it's gonna go a little bit past this guy since it's kind of, since this is not completely square, it's a little off. So I'm going off the, the part that's off, that's closest to the wall. I grab a measurement. I'm just hooking this to this board. Got it. Then I'm gonna go right past it. This is literally the line of this, so I can just cut down. I don't have to cut a hole. That's that's pretty cool. One other measurement. I need to take a measurement from the bottom. Mm, we'll go two and three quarters. And then for this guy, I don't have the US. I ordered them, they're not in yet, so I don't know the exact hole I need to cut for it. So what I'm gonna do, drill a hole that this wire will fit through and then just put it in there. And then when that actual thing comes in, I'll shove this back inside carefully. And then I will cut the hole to the actual size of the USB hole plug that I need and then pull the wire back. There. You know, pretty good. That is not fun to do by yourself. I'll tell you that right now. So I literally screwed every screw ball, about to screw everything in, and I forgot about this transition. Now I wanted to follow this weather stripping, and I will possibly put more weather stripping behind it, something to create a seal. But I wanted to follow it, so what I'm gonna do is take my pencil and just mark it. If that makes sense. I'm just gonna do it the best I can, and I'll just probably adjust if I if I need to. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. That came out pretty good. And then I'll have to measure this next piece, and I'll have to rip it gonna suck. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do today is put this last piece in. It's gonna run the length of it, but we have to stop it because of these cutouts. For those of you who watched any of my other videos, these windows were existing. I would not have put a window here. But anyways, going back to the matter at hand, um, I installed the nailer here for my framing episode. So what I'm going to do is turn up with the shiplap like so. I'm gonna cut it to length to the same height as this, and then I'm going to install a piece like so. So, and then cut it this way, so it's literally up and over, it's framed in. 
and then I'll probably put a piece of trim around the whole thing. But that's kind of the best thing that I kind of saw as far as doing it this way. So, so I'm gonna make this measurement by folding the square off of the nailer, four and five eighths, eighth inch gap. So four and a half is my cut. did do because I didn't film it because I didn't like little half hour increments. So one, I realized that I screwed this board up. And I screwed it up because I cut it flush along this plane instead of cutting these little cutouts because I want these to continue. Now, I don't know what is better to do. You cut this as one piece, have it continue. I thought having one continuous piece would work, but again, I don't really know what is best. But pretty much to talk about what I did, I, I measured these pieces because these are going to curve in and frame out this entire deal on the end, the middle, and that end. I spent all this time measuring and cutting. I got it up here, and when I got the last screw down here, the shiplap broke, effectively ruining this entire piece. It was very disheartening. So I took it, I put it on another piece of wood, I traced it, cut another one, put it back on here. I also realized that this plug-in, the USB plug-in, had to be wired in right away. I forgot I did not order a faceplate to go over this. I just ordered one that actually screws in the back. Now I have more of these I do in that wall and I will film those and how I did them, but just know that these have to be wired and put it in place right away. I got that done, we got these done. The plan now is to continue up here until we get to around here and then we'll finish covering this wall. Then we're gonna frame this window, frame this bed cut out, and then we'll move on to the bad side. <laughs> first problem area and this is if you watch my framing video this is one where I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do here because this is a weird one and it's weird because the van goes from flat to a slight slant into a new plane it gradually just keeps going and you have all this empty space up here so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is probably put furring strip here sheet this whole thing with plywood and then build a shelf out right here I have a little lip so I have a, like a little cubby up here and that'll cover this area and what I'm gonna probably do with this exposed metal part is um, I've seen people do this in a lot of videos is put like a carpeting like glue a carpeting onto it so you don't see this crappy white metal so I think that's what I'm gonna do so first thing I need to do is take this measurement cut this piece cut the slit so it kind of just goes into that so I'm gonna go ahead and measure that I'm gonna fit it up next piece and it's just gonna end right here along with this guy I guess and then there'll be one more half piece I got to do quarter piece and then that'll be it for this wall then we can go into cutting in those pieces right there yeah one screw in this because the furring strips only go to about here and I didn't want to put two screws two holes really close to each other and it's firm dude so we're done all the way up I'm really liking how that turned out now I'm going to actually probably add another layer of this half inch ISO board because I got enough room so I might as well just put another one in there I'll probably do the same on that side I'm trying to line up these with this if that makes sense so I'm gonna take a measurement, bottom one, and then I'm probably gonna rip a piece and do that. And then I want this to flow through the wall. So I'm gonna cut these, I'm gonna start this all the way up. You can start framing it in. Notch the ends, just cut the ends off because it's circular at the end to get all the way down to the bottom. inch 
shuffle it. Fits, but putting it in there is gonna be the tricky part. So I think I'm gonna have to drill through. Well, I don't know. I'll pre-drill it and see what happens. <laughs> I didn't notice this before, but I actually should have put these in first, these side pieces, because this nailer is now pointless because these have covered it up. I want to move it. I think that side I might be okay-ish. No, I won't. I won't. I'll be okay on the bottom, but once I get close to the top, it pushes out. So go ahead and cut a nailer, screw it through right here in a couple places, and that way I have a surface to nail to when I put these pieces on. So go ahead and carefully install this. on this side and should be good all right so the next thing we're going to do is frame in these sides and it was pretty tricky so I went ahead and did this side first to make sure I knew what I was doing you'll notice that the lines curve exactly how I want them to do to follow through so that's pretty sweet this is gonna get some trim on the outside so we don't mind how that looks. So the first thing I need to do, since again I screwed up and I should have cut this longer, but I need to get this piece to follow through. So it doesn't need to match this one because again there's going to be plywood coming in here so it's going to cover whatever's not showing right here. So we'll just get that measurement straight off here and we'll measure all the way to the tip of the tongue on this one. Two and nine sixteenths. You have two different angles that aren't a 90 and that's this one to this and the outside. What I pretty much did was just take a board like this. After I cut this piece, I cut it super long. I just kept cutting a little bit more off until I finally got a good fit. Then I went ahead and cut that piece so I had that template. So every time I cut a new board, I put it against the board like so, and I just trace it because it has that angle. Or if you have an angle finder, you can just match it to this so you always have it. I don't have one, I lost it. I already got this angle, and then once you push that into there, you just trace the back side of this and you can cut that and that's your piece. Then I put this nailer in, so all I gotta do is just shoot a pre-drill a hole and then shoot it. Um, originally I was gonna utilize, cause this nailer is worthless there's only like a quarter inch there and I can't get a screw into that it's gonna split they're gonna split that or it's gonna split this or both so we need a little bit more bite then I was going to use these uh, one by threes these pine one by threes to, that I use for the framing but these split so freaking easy dude like I don't even want a chance of that so I went ahead and just cut some sanded we had some sanded two by that we're using for our cabinet I went ahead and cut it about that thick, put some glue on it, glued it through here, same height as this nailer, and I put that all the way down, just screwed it in. Now we got our piece cut. Now it's time to install it. Oh. Who's your friend and detail stuff like this? All's done, except for the windowsill, which I'm gonna wait on. <laughs> now that this wall is technically done, minus the windowsill, we will work on the other side and start laying it up. Now again, this was a lot easier of a wall, so I wanted to do it first, so I got kind of know how I did things, which I'm very glad I did because this wall is gonna be very difficult. So we've reached the part, and I almost forgot about this completely, that I need to put the shore plug power in, shore power plug in. That means this guy has to go through the van, which means gotta cut a hole in the van, which is scary in itself, but something needs to be done. Kinda wish I waited to put that board in to do this, but it's all good. So I'm gonna do, take this drill bit, just gonna drill a hole so I know where it's at on the other side. And then I'm gonna take a two inch hole saw bit, and I'm going to drill a hole, which scares me. And I'm gonna paint it. And then I'm going to use some of that marine sealant I have left over and caulk the inner side of this gasket because I do not trust this little rubber gasket. And we're going to screw it in. 
Stop it and we'll cut the hole out for the plug. Different elevation change here. We've got a light switch we gotta cut out for. This shoots over here, comes down here. I gotta fit it. Ow! Dang! I gotta fit it inside here. Come over here. Another four elevation changes. I'm sorry. I gotta cut out a hole. So it's pretty gnarly. I just med I spent an hour measuring this whole thing out. I don't have any 16 footers left. I'm praying, praying I get this right. shell that was the hardest one took me over an hour and a half my god so this is the USB plug it just comes up and on the other side you'll see how far yeah it sticks out really far and it has these two little ferrules on it, it even says on it pot you probably can't see it but positive and negative and we're just gonna connect those and then put this board up will frame their windows out with some sort of cutout or pre-manufactured cutout to the length of the window. Um, we're doing this on budget, so we're not doing that. I did buy window casing to go in here at Home Depot. I went ahead and cut them down to size in Home Depot, bought them, brought them here. And I actually did one window and <laughs> it was disastrous. It was absolutely disastrous. I'm glad I did it first before I could show it on camera because, oh my God, it was a learning curve. So I think this would be impossible to do with screws. I mean, it'd be so tedious. I went ahead and borrowed uh, a colleague of mine's uh, Brad Nailer. So that helped out tremendously, but the act of doing the windows was not fun at all. Pretty much how I'm framing these out is I wanted a window sill, an actual window sill. And this one, the other side, I made flat, flush up against this because the cabinet was going to be hiding most of it. This one, I might actually push out a, a little bit, like actually overhang here, so it actually has a window sill to set on. I want this to actually be a window sill. So all I did was the top and bottom, made them flush. It was totally fine, nothing weird. The problem in lies on the uprights for a couple reasons. One, you have every angle is different. You have this angle, the window angle, this angle, and then this angle, it is I, it is all different. This is not straight, this is not straight, this is at some angle, I don't know what it is, and this is also at some weird angle. So I'm stuck, I, I went ahead and cut my first piece down in the casing, and I only bought a couple pieces for scrap, and I went through those like that. And before you knew it, I used all my casing up. So I actually just did the top and bottom with the window casing, and I'm just doing the sides and shiplap, and it took me forever 
to get this right. And I'll show you what I did. So what I ended up doing was after many failed attempts, like I said, I ended up taking a scrap piece. I put it up here and I just started making little measurements and cutting it at an angle and then getting literally going back there, cutting it, putting it back here, cutting it different edges and just finding this angle, whatever this angle is, perpendicular to this line. So it took me forever to get that one. So when I finally got that, same thing for the bottom, I have the top and bottom pieces now. I got a measurement of this back piece because this measurement is different because it angles upward and downward. I cut it to the longest measurement first. I cut this one and made this one stationary. I'm not going to change this one, but the bottom one, I tried putting it in. I would cut like a quarter inch off, try putting it in another quarter inch, try putting in eighth inch. It was, it was a disaster if I'm being completely honest, but I did finally get it. The problem is it doesn't line up with the bottom. So what I'm going to end up doing is having to borrow the Brad nailer again when I do all the trim in the van. I'm just going to have to either put a trim piece here or a giant cock seam, which I don't want to do. So not quite sure what to do, but right now I'm just, I just need to focus on getting the window frames 100% built out and then we can start putting wood putty and paint this whole thing. So I'm going to have to find this one on this window and then we'll go ahead and build it out. casing and I'll go over this in a different video when I actually install all trim. Now we're going to put some wood putty on these and let it dry and then we can sand it down. And by the way, I have links for all this in the description for everything I use. So order straight up Amazon, it helps me out. Yeah, it'd be awesome. So next step, let's do it. All right, so the stuff I'm just using is your normal DAP plastic wood putty. Uh, we're just going to be scraping it up covering up all these holes. That's why we recess them. That's why we countersink them. So we can just fill them in. And when it's all said and done, when it dries, the stuff goes on one color. It says it goes on pink and dries in a different color, natural, whatever that is. And then we'll just take a sander, sand it down smooth, and it'll be ready for a coat of paint. So none of these will be showing. It just doesn't look good with all these screw holes. It looks terrible, so. So many screw holes, but it's gonna be worth it. So now I'm gonna let this dry. Again, it turns a different color when it's supposed to be dry, but I'm gonna leave it all night. Probably a whole nother day. And we'll come back here with the belt sander, we'll sand down everything smooth. We'll be ready to paint this thing, dude. Stoked. cleaning out the entire van. God, that's the first time I've cleaned the van, honestly, since I've had it. There was so much stuff. And honestly, just, it, it never ended. But I cleaned out the whole thing. I also went ahead and taped off all the stuff that I don't want to get affected by the paint. And I'm going to be putting the first layer of paint in. Stoked. I think I'm only going to do two coats. I might do three. I'm not sure. We'll see how it looks after two coats. But my plan is tonight to paint it. And then tomorrow, paint it again. And then we'll see how it looks. Walls are finished and they look awesome if I'm being honest. Like I I like them. I like the way they look. This is taking me the longest out of anything. Out of everything and anything. And I'm stoked that they're finally, finally done. This is how I installed the walls. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value out of this video as a newcomer to this kind of stuff and to interior construction. I'm very pleased at what, how it came out. So if you did get any value out of this video or knowledge or maybe some insight on what goes into this so you can do your van, please hit the like button. It would mean the world to me. I'm still new to YouTube. I'm really trying to grind out here. I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers in the year 2023. So 
please hit the subscribe button too if you could. And also just to follow along with the van build itself. Next, we're gonna do the backsplash, which I'm literally gonna do after I'm done filming this video. If you saw something that I did that was wrong or I did something stupid, let me know in the comments as well because we would like other people to know so they're not making the same stupid mistakes that I do. Yeah, guys, thank you again so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.